Hey everybody, let's get started with D&D Miniatures. Today we talk about miniatures for tabletop games like Dungeons and Dragons. There are three major categories, pre-painted miniatures, unpainted miniatures, and of course, miniatures that you craft yourself. First off, I'm going to share some thoughts about each one of these categories, and then I'm going to attempt to sum up my feelings about the current state of the hobby and how to best get into miniatures. Some of the most popular videos on this channel are about me finding alternative miniatures, which are generally going to be pre-painted miniatures, which are going to roughly fit in with the scale and purpose of D&D miniatures. Finding those is going to be hit or miss. Whenever I do a video, then generally speaking, that video is not going to be evergreen. For example, Dreamblade miniatures used to be very cheap online. You could find these everywhere for pennies on the dollar. No longer. Uh, you can see on the left is the Nobby White Spider, an excellent Hasbro miniature, which is still available around the internet for super cheap. But that dragon from Dreamblade next to it, no, that is no longer cheap at all. There's always going to be the odd company out there like EM4, which puts out this excellent set of metal pre-painted miniatures. But sadly... Probably the best miniatures on the market right now are still the old Hasbro pre-painted miniatures for several reasons, uh, mostly because of the durability and the uh, fact that they have all the very specific D&D miniatures that everybody wants. Throw them in a backpack, carry them to the game, throw them in the backpack again. They're probably going to be fine. It's very difficult to chip the paint job, and like I said, the variety of sculpts on these are generally really good, excellent use of translucent materials. But unfortunately, the price has pretty much shown that a lot of people are now interested in collecting these rather than just using them for games, which means the price has gone up a lot. So now the conversation turns to the very mixed bag that is the modern WizKids d and miniatures. There are so many excellent miniatures that have been produced, and there are so many of them that are just subpar. And frankly, it's a really tough thing to recommend, though even though there are the miniatures that I really like, they are sold primarily as blind boxes. So the only chance you'll have to get a really good deal is hope that the prices that the resellers set and the secondary sellers set at the start of a uh, release is going to be cheap. Uh, these flail snails, I believe, were relatively affordable at the start, but then they went up in price. And of course, you can always find a really expensive, really cool miniatures if you just roll the dice on those blind boxes, but you're never guaranteed anything. Listen, the truth is, if you like pre-painted miniatures because you don't have the time to paint your own, or you just like them for collecting, you're kind of in a rough spot right now. You'll probably just have to wait and see if a new company starts large-scale production on pre-painted stuff, or simply wait for sales. Uh, I know with some of the less popular uh, Pathfinder and D&D sets, those do go on sale on sites like uh, Amazon and Miniature Market and Cool Stuff and Company every once in a while. And with the other Hasbro stuff, well, if you really like one of the pre-painted miniatures, then I suggest you look for a sale now because they're just going to keep on going up in price. Uh, many different companies uh, have all tried to do the whole pre-painted things on a very small scale. I could mention a bunch of them. However, none of them have really put together a good product. I know that in the past, Reaper Miniatures did do a pre-painted line, and recently they, they put their toes in their water again with a very expensive but very large and impressive pre-painted dragon. So, yeah, I mean, maybe in the near future somebody will crack the code 
But uh, other than that, just look for alternative pre-painted stuff when it when you see it around, uh, because there are miniatures out there that still can be used for D&D that aren't specifically made for D&D. It's just much easier to find unpainted ones rather than the pre-painted ones. The amount of unpainted options out there is absolutely staggering. If I had a 10-hour video, maybe I could go in detail about all the different brands, materials, releases. Bear in mind that you always have to do your size comparisons on Google and check out this channel to see if I've reviewed any specific uh, miniatures from any specific releases. But the king of unpainted miniatures is still another Hasbro product. Old Dungeons and Dragons board games, they come with up to 40 miniatures unpainted from the same molds as the pre-painted Hasbro miniatures. And frankly, it's one of the greatest releases that you can get. These go on sale all the time for 40 to 35 bucks, meaning you pay only $1 per miniature. They paint up great. They take most primers okay. Simply put, the best set for D&D specific miniatures. However, there are a plethora of other choices out there. But you know what? I still want to talk about these a little bit longer. These are some of the first miniatures I ever painted. For whatever reason, the sculpting, uh, I think it's just the simplicity with enough details to make it interesting to paint, even for a beginner. And it's good to have multiples of the miniatures you're kind of going to get in these. You get a bunch of zombies in a bunch of the different sets. You can get ghouls like these. Very specific D&D miniatures that uh, you're going to eventually use in your game. And of course, the very specific D&D monsters. The D&D troll. The mind flayer. The specific loth demon. And of course, the gibbering mouther. Excellent miniatures, and like I said, very specific D&D miniatures, which you're going to find in other sets, but uh, sometimes because of IP issues, they can't make it look exactly like the D&D monster. You're not going to have that issue with these sets. They're going to look exactly like the D&D thing that they're representing. And of course, a lot of the miniatures out there, like the uh, Artemis Antari miniature, the true hero of the Forgotten Realms, uh, his unpainted version, obviously, much, much cheaper than his pre-painted options. Even though I'm a big fan of this man, I don't even own the original Hasbro pre-painted one. Uh, maybe in the future. Uh, here we can see a Reaper Bones miniature compared to a D&D &D board game miniature. Obviously, they're both cool, but the D&D &D board game miniature already has the, uh, the base built in for D&D &D stuff. Here we have a bunch of the Reaper miniatures. Reaper Bones Black on the left and Regular Reaper on the right. And we have the Wizards of the Coast official miniatures through WizKids. And yes, a lot of these can be really good. I actually really like the WizKids unpainted stuff because it's pre-primed. A lot of people strip the primer, but I don't. And here we have some examples from Mantic, the Magic the Gathering board game, and one from the Zombie Side Black Plague the uh, medieval version of the zombie side, cool mini or not, board game. And of course, here we have the Reading Dragon. That's from Wildspire Miniatures, a joy to paint up. Uh, look for Wildspire Miniatures on Amazon. That's on my Amazon shopping list as well. And of course, if you don't particularly like the pre-paint, you can always touch up the pre-paint like I did with these lovely pack beaks, axe beaks. You can see I, I, I touched it up a little bit, and I think it makes a world of difference. Showcasing off a Chainmail Knoll from the Chainmail miniature lines. Obviously, metal miniatures are going to have lots of advantages and some disadvantages from the newer plastic ones. And of course, 3D printed miniatures. I don't have a 3D printer. However, there's been a couple cases where I've gotten some excellent 3D printed stuff. I think it's a technology that just needs a little bit more time in the oven. But yeah, obviously, my local game store, the Relentless Dragon, gave me the Goose Hydra at a very reasonable price that they they printed up themselves in store and it's beautiful love the stuff so yeah I, I look forward to the future of 3d printing and maybe soon i'll be able to get a printer myself 
So obviously you got to paint these guys up yourself. Uh, that might be a little bit intimidating. I think there's a lot of very good guides online. I will say that I think it comes down to personal preference. However, the Black Magic Craft Guide on how to paint miniatures is pretty good. Honestly, my method of learning how to paint miniatures is that I watched a bunch of different uh, miniature painting uh, tutorials on YouTube, and I looked up a bunch of articles, and I literally just Google search how to paint feathers, and that's how I find out new uh, methods to paint stuff. But yeah, those are my three major suggestions. The WizKids, the Reaper Miniatures, and the, uh, the Hasbro Old School Board Games. Again, uh, all of the Hasbro Old School Board Games are linked in my Amazon store. You can find that link below for D&D stuff. And again, you should visit your local gaming store to see what they have in stock. That is the absolute best way to find out what sort of miniatures that you like the look of. Seeing them in person is always the best shopping method. Most of the miniatures that I've crafted on this channel are additive crafting, where you just kind of have a frame and then you add on with material, or kind of like a kit bash, but instead of proper model kits, I just use random stuff that I find at the Goodwill by the pound. I learned how to craft miniatures by Google searching tutorials and looking on YouTube, but obviously the biggest inspiration is the Tabletop Crafters Guild. But why craft? Certainly you can buy or 3D print or pay somebody to 3D print you practically anything you need. Well, if you really want something very specific or something that is specifically yours, then crafting is a long time-honored tradition in order to make your game completely unique. And that's what I really love about crafting and that's why I love crafting. You'll notice a lot of my miniatures are very bizarre and generally not stuff that you could find anywhere else. You can check out how I crafted all of those miniatures on the other videos on this channel. So, I'm just gonna try to sum up some thoughts in this last bit. One take, baby, let's go. I've been collecting for a while now. My biggest advice is visit your local game stores. It's good to support local businesses, uh, but you gotta visit there to see if you wanna support it. A store that tries to pressure you to buying the newest or most expensive stuff is not great. Other stores even sometimes inflate the MSRP, which is crazy, but apparently some stores do that. I've seen it. That's not great either. Many places will sell miniatures as a very secondary product line to other things that they want to sell, mostly collectible cards. But these places will sometimes also have really good sales because eventually they'll just want shelf space for new product and they really don't care that much about the miniatures. So it's give and take. I'm lucky enough that some of the places near me have excellent sales during events like the Free RPG Day when there's discounts on nearly all of their products, including ones that generally never go down in price, including online. But the most important thing about visiting your local store is that you'll get to see the miniatures in person. Most miniature companies nowadays, even the smaller ones, use digital renders to promote and market their product. And the actual miniature that you see can be very disappointing by comparison. Occasionally, the opposite can also be true, especially with miniatures with translucent materials. Sometimes they, much, they look much nicer in person and the 3D render does not do them justice. Minis Gallery is the premier website to visit if you want to see actual pictures of the latest and greatest miniature releases. They've even started to do YouTube videos. This site combs over the internet to be some of the first places where you can go to show what the actual physical miniatures look like. Uh, for actually purchasing miniatures, if your local store uh, doesn't have any deals or you can't find them. Mainstream sites like Miniature Market and Cool Stuff and Company are your friends, especially when it comes to board game miniatures that can be used for D&D. They go on sale a lot. Uh, these sites feature free shipping if you pay them enough money, which is an incredibly good deal nowadays when shipping is just very expensive. Uh, you have to sign up for the email notifications because stuff on Miniature Market will disappear within mere seconds. 
of the sale starting. So sadly, that's just the way it is. If there's a really good deal and there's really good stuff for sale, it's going to go pretty much within the first hour. eBay lots are a mixed bag. Look for different spelling variations of D&D miniatures. Anything properly labeled with D&D miniatures or Dungeons & Dragons miniatures will get sold quickly. So follow a bunch of terms and make sure you sort by newest buy it now or ending soonest auctions to see if there's any good deals that don't have that many bidders or watchers. Also, the specific name of the miniature that you're interested in is a really good term because sometimes people will just list the miniature by its name and not mention D&D. No matter what method you use, have a plan. It's okay to get certain miniatures that you love. For example, the knobby white spider from the Star Wars miniature game from Hasbro. Buying a bunch of miniatures from this line would have been a pain to deal with because I don't really use that many of them. But I really liked that knobby white spider and I'm so glad I bought it when I did. It's still available for cheap, but I think I got it for under 5 bucks, which is a massive deal. There's always the option of buying a big lot of miniatures and reselling the rest, but that does take time, and trust me, time is not an unlimited resource. Neither is space. Unless you really know what you're doing, you don't want to get into the idea of just like buying and reselling. That's, that's kind of a real pain right now, unless you really want to invest time, money, and space into getting the absolute best deals. Sometimes it's just simpler to just look for a better deal in the future or just pay a premium if you really want that miniature. In the, ha in the past, Hasbro had several lines of pre-painted miniatures and the sculpting and durability was amazing on some of them. The uh, painting, it, it wasn't really that great, but thanks to the heat processing, heat annealing, uh, that paint is going to stay on the miniatures. And that's why people have really continued to appreciate lines like the D&D &D miniatures. They are probably going to be around for until <laughs> they're going to be around for a very long time. And the paint's going to be around there too. More and more people are collecting them. And since there are no miniatures of that quality being made today, uh, they're becoming more and more collectible and thus more and more rare and more and more expensive. Uh, when it comes to pre-painted stuff, there was several lines of limited pre-painted miniatures from smaller companies, but those are pretty rare to find nowadays. I talked about uh, Reaper's uh, Legendary Encounters line, which was a very popular line, which is, I, I don't even see that being sold anywhere for a reasonable price anymore. Um, when I started collecting, there was a game called Confrontation, a Age of Ragnarok. And that was a war game with pre-painted miniatures, and it was super cheap. I'm talking about way less than a dollar per miniature. And now it's super collectible, and the same sets that I used to see for $5 are now like 30 bucks a pop on eBay. It's one of the very few pre-painted war games that's ever existed. And there's going to be more alternatives out there for sure. You have... While you have a lot of choices for unpainted, the pre-painted stuff, I think we're just going to have to wait for technology to catch up. And then every once in a while, you're going to be able to find some pre-painted thing which is going to fit in well with D&D. But with unpainted, there's so many companies that are creating Kickstarters out there. You can get an amazing amount of miniatures in various materials like PVC, thermoplastic, and either there's even miniature companies out there that were doing Kickstarted uh, miniatures for resin miniatures or pewter miniatures, which are much more uh, expensive for various reasons. But I think that will go kind of in waves. And especially now, pewter's super expensive, so I don't see anybody doing a pewter uh, miniature collection anytime soon. Uh, you have a lot of choices for these deals with Unpainted. So many companies are creating Kickstarters where you can get a massive amount of miniatures that uh, you just have to be careful not to heavily invest in something where you're not going to be satisfied at the end of it. This happened to me with the, uh, I believe it was called Kings of War. Uh, that, that Kickstarter, they had a bunch of previews and they looked really cool, but unfortunately the miniatures that you got were not really similar to the things. And there was uh, you got a bunch of miniatures that I didn't really like 
one of the factions just kind of was like Disney evil pigman style thing, and I just didn't like the looks of that at all. So I was just kind of stuck with those, and I've been very slowly trying to get rid of them as time has moved on. Uh, and of course, remember, uh, you have to paint the miniatures if you buy them unpainted. But you know what? That's not a big deal nowadays because you got a lot of choices for painting supplies. It's easy to buy. There's lots of hobby stores that have them. And you can uh, buy paint sets online for under 20 bucks that'll have all the basic colors and a brush. And you can even go the old school route of buying camel hair brushes and craft paints at your local craft store. Craft paints are still relatively inexpensive. I believe you can get most of them for around a dollar per a big old thing. I don't think I've ever run out of craft paint from one of my big things that I bought when I first started crafting. And all that paint is still good. I can't say the same for some of the expensive Citadel paint that I got. So bear in mind, if you are going to buy some of the more expensive paint like Citadel, it has additives into it that like make it dry uh, more durably. I believe, again, I, I don't know exactly what the, the um, different ingredients are, but it has a habit of drying out much more quickly than El Cheapo craft paint. I'm, I'm just, I'm shaking this old El Cheapo craft paint right in front of the mic, and it is still good, but uh, yeah. So if you're going to buy the expensive paint, make sure that you have a project where you're going to need to use it or you really like it. Um, so yeah, and again, that's another good place where you can use your local hobby store because you can go in there and try out a couple of paints and see if you like it. Uh, that's what I did with the scale color stuff. And oh my god, some of the scale color stuff that I've gotten is amazing. My absolute favorite uh, color is their Metal and Alchemy, the Necro Gold. I love this stuff. I've used it for everything. And I would have never heard about it until I like actually went to the game store and I saw it in person. I saw the color in person. I was like, you know, that looks really interesting. So, yeah. Again, I've done lots of stuff. I know Black Magic Craft has done a very good thing about getting started with the painting, uh, as well as a bunch of the other people on the Tabletop Crafting Guild. So you can just browse YouTube tutorials and get a good idea of how to uh, get started with that. I guess that's it. This was my big video about getting started with D&D miniatures. Uh, I just wanted to do a generic video that would answer maybe some of the easier questions that people had. If you have any questions, please let me know in the comments below. And thanks a lot for watching the video. I really appreciate it.